Joint Mobile Startups TO and HTML5 Toronto Meetup. Uh, I'm Ray Coe, I'm one of the organizers for Mobile Startups TO. Uh, as you know, very well known tonight, we've got Frederic Harper from Mozilla talking to us about Firefox OS. Um, just a couple notes is that uh, this is our first joint meetup group uh, with HTML5 Toronto. Um, Matt, Matt Potter, as you guys well know. Um, Mobile Startups TO is uh, taking a format of a case study uh, of usually a startup every month. So we take you from end to end, from beginning to end, uh, of how these companies uh, build their apps, right? From ideation, design, to development. Uh, this month is a little bit different. Uh, we wanted to bring uh, Fred in to show you an emerging new OS uh, as, and um, show you some opportunities for startups to take advantage of, right? Emerging markets. Um, Tonight is also special in that uh, everyone should have gotten a raffle ticket for FITC. If you haven't gotten one, see Bonnie up front. Um, and just another note is that Mobile Startups TO runs once every month, first Wednesday of every month. So next month, February 5th, is our next meetup. Uh, so check us out on Meetup and uh, hope to see you there. Um, next up, Matt Potter. Cool, thank you. Awesome, Ray. So, like Ray had said, uh, this is the first joint event between Mobile Startups and HTML Toronto. Uh, for those of you who are from HTML Toronto Group, welcome. I think there's about 50 of us here. Raise your hand if you're from uh, Mobile Startups. Oh, I got some of you guys. Yeah, awesome. Anybody who's in Toronto and not the Mobile Startups, trust me, join the group. Really good team, doing a lot of great stuff, um, and they're, I think, been around as long as we've been. So, uh, absolutely amazing group for them. A uh, few announcements on our end. Uh, Obviously, welcome to 2014. Everybody got the email that I sent out the other day. Uh, we now have store products, so obviously buy away. But um, heads up, I am dealing with a bit of a quality thing. They're a bit thin, so wear a t-shirt underneath them for now. Uh, other than that, uh, big thanks to WebNot War. Uh, came on for another year of sponsorship for us, so thank you to them. Uh, they were a partnership last year, did a bunch of stuff. Uh, we've got some big plans for this year, thanks to them, as well as uh, our other ongoing sponsors, uh, Oanda and Digiflare. So big shout out to them. Thank you. I think they're all here. Anyway, um, you guys all know them. They're great faces, the start of the year. But that's not why we're here. We're here to hear Fred talk uh, today, as well as we're actually going to invite Caroline up here to do a quick giveaway of two FITC tickets, probably at the end of the night. At the end of the night, so everybody has those raffle tickets. We'll invite Caroline up here to, uh, to talk about what FITC is, because there was a couple questions earlier. There were. Thank you, Matthew. Um, hi, everyone. I am Caroline from FITC. So I know we're going to get quickly into Fred's talk, and I could talk on like for an hour on FITC, but I will try to be fast. Um, it is our three-day festival happening April 27th through 29th, plus an optional day of workshops. There are 1,200 plus attendees, 75 presenters from around the world, and we cover everything. Uh, creative coding with biohacking and makers. There's developments with people like Grant Skinner, the, the creator of CreateJS. We have the business aspects, and we also have, um, from the design and inspiration, people like Sagmeister and Hal Lasko, who you will actually be amazed by the the artwork this man, the, this 98-year-old blind man creates. Um, a lot of great stuff that happens through it. Of course, all the evening events as well, the FITC awards, now in its 13th year. Um, tickets are on sale, a handful of super early bird tickets. I think it's about eight super early bird tickets are still on at a super, super great price. But we will be giving away two later tonight as well. Um, so you may just win one. And for any students, student tickets are only $200 for the whole event. You get groups of people together and we'll discount that even further. Um, we will give the tickets away later with Fred. If you have any other questions, please come talk to me. Follow us at Twitter, at FITC. And F as always, thank you to HTML Toronto and Mobile Startups TO for being one of our community supporters with it. And we hope to see you there. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, thanks. I went to FITC, a couple of FITC events uh, in Toronto, of course, and uh, you really need to be there. Really great events, really great speakers, and, and something you forgot to say, it's not just about the talks, it's about all the people there, all the networking, this is amazing. The people you meet there, the passionate people about technology, and of course all the great speakers. So uh, I will be there at uh, the next FITC Toronto, so if you don't have the chance to talk tonight, let's meet at FITC. Mr. Potter. Yes. Yes? 
I can talk again more. I can also talk for a couple of hours. So uh, welcome, thanks, thanks for coming here. My name is Fred, uh, Frederick Harper. Uh, as you probably already noticed, uh, I'm not from Toronto, I'm from Montreal, I'm francophone with my beautiful accent, but I'm pretty sure you already like it uh, starting from now. So I work at Mozilla, I'm a technical evangelist. So what do a technical evangelist? It's basically giving love to developers. So my job is to give love to developers, to talk about technology, help developers, uh, being successful on our platform, and uh, of course, doing some support, some presentation during uh, conferences, user group like tonight, and uh, just be there to help you. So if you have any question, comment, please let me know. Uh, feel free to tweet during the conference, during the presentation, uh, my Twitter handle, at FHarper. Uh, you can also go on my blog, not during the presentation, but later, at another time, outofcomfortzone.net. I will put the slides there, so that you don't have really to take the notes on things on the slide, and we will have the recording after, so basically you don't have to take notes at all. Uh, just listen or sleep, either one. And uh, so that's it. So tonight I'm there to uh, talk about Firefox OS uh, with a startup angle. Basically, uh, we started the even with mobile startup TO and uh, HTML Toronto just join us. So that's going to be part web, part HTML, part CSS, part JavaScript with a big focus on Firefox OS and with a small introduction around uh, why that could be a great opportunity for a startup. So there is the startup business model. I worked with a lot of startup. I was part of a startup. I really like the startup world. Don't get me wrong, passionate people, crazy idea, you really believe in what you're doing, really nice product, really things that are really good for early adopter, really great solutions are being made, has been made uh, in the startup industry. But most of the time there is something that I call the startup bullshit at some point. I don't know if you know the underpants gnome uh, business model from South Park, but this is basically a three-step way to conquer the world or just to being rich. So step one is to really collect underpants. Step two and step three is to make profit. So this is the underpants gnome business model. And sometimes too often when we are thinking about startups, I feel a little bit like the same. Let's make a product, let's get users, we're going to define at some point how we're going to make money, and we're going to be rich. And I don't know. Microsoft, Amazon, Google will buy us, and we're going to be rich. There's always something missing. And, and like I said, don't get me wrong, I like the startups. I like that, those, those people, really passionate, really great product, most of the time that are coming from uh, people in the startup. And when I talk to startup people, most of the time, okay, I have the idea. I want to make profit. I have my product idea, I know what I'm going to do, but should I start with an iOS application? Because this is quite popular, this is the cool stuff, everybody has an iPhone, or should I start with an Android application, or should I do both? And for me, this is totally wrong, totally wrong. You should start with a web application. That should be your first step. And I'm not talking about Firefox OS at all, I'm talking about web application, because let me tell you my, my, my little story. A couple of years ago, I was using an iPhone. That was the cool stuff. All the cool kids had an iPhone. Uh, Android was not quite there. And it was in a perfect world. I had my smartphone working well. Uh, all the apps that I wanted, all the new products, the new services were creating an iPhone apps. That was good because I was the hunter on the iPhone. A couple of years after, I wanted to try Android. But again, it was in the part where Android was not quite popular, so people were still doing iPhone application, and I was, I was left behind because I was using an Android. I was like, oh, that sucks. I want to test that new thing. I can't access it from the browser because they only have an iPhone apps. Today it's better. There are most of those companies are making an Android or an iPhone app. I used to work at Microsoft. When I joined Microsoft, part of my role was to talk about Windows Phone. Yeah, now I'm not Mozilla, I wasn't Microsoft. Another story I can tell you after. But I used to use a, a Windows phone. Again, early adopter, not a lot of people were using it at that time when I started Microsoft. It's getting more popular, but again, it was not quite there, so people were now doing iPhone and Android apps. But I was still left behind with my Windows phone. And today, at Mozilla, still early adopter, using Firefox OS, great phone on the web, what happened again? If you don't have any web application, 
I'm kind of stuck. But this is my own story, and this is not just my story. This is a story of a lot of people. And in North America, it may not be a big, big, big challenge, because a lot of people have an Android or an iPhone or have the money to do so. But when you would think about creating a product, starting something, a service, you should think to uh, start about the web first. At some point, you would probably need a backend for your mobile application. That's going to work for your web application. So there is a lot of things that are going to be able to, re to, uh, to, to reuse again in the future while building, while, while building your application. Sorry. And I'm not a big fan of statistics, but those are just huge number. No matter which website, which statistic, which company, those are huge number. We're going to have 30 billion devices connected in a couple of years. Of course, we're talking about the Internet of Things. So my toaster and my fridge will be connected to the internet. Even today, I have so many things, like my, 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 my scale weight uh, is connected to the Wi-Fi, my TV, my Xbox, my Apple TV. My, all the products I have, they're connected to the internet. But when we, when we talk about devices for user, like computer, smartphone, tablet, not everybody are using an iPhone or an Android. And what's the common point for all those platforms? What's the common point, access point for everybody? It's the web. It's the browser most of the time. Either it's HTML5 or HTML4 or whatever the version you use, whatever if your application is old or enough. Web browser is quite common. If you have kind of a new device, you're going to be able to use latest standard. And if you have a web application, I'm going to be able to use it. And you won't be penalized if you have an iPhone or an Android or any other devices. You're going to give web access to people. So this is really, really uh, a good way to start your product. And what I'm going to talk today is to go from HTML5 to that HTML5, the glorious, the brilliant, the really nice, cool HTML5. For years, we talked about HTML5, and, and we're not doing, we're not saying HTML4 in the past. Now it's kind of a marketing world, word, and we are saying, hey, HTML5, HTML5, that's going to be the glorious thing. We're going to have new elements, new features that's going to be awesome to build our application, and it's awesome. It's awesome for users because we're creating more dynamics application. We're creating more good stuff. And as developer, we have access to way more feature, way more elements that save our lives, that save us time, and that give us the opportunity to do stuff that we were not able to do before. But there is still missing some part when you are thinking about building web application for mobile. I cannot totally access the hardware. I have some, some feature that I'm still missing to build my application. And this is where the platform you deserve come. So this is why Mozilla created uh, Firefox OS. So there is a couple of reasons. If you know Mozilla, if you know the browser, uh, we are a nonprofit organization, and our goal is really to uh, open the web to more people, we give access to that amazing thing that we call the web to more people. And we feel that maybe it's not everybody that have 500 bucks to buy the latest smartphone. Maybe in Canada, we are kind of lucky with those companies that uh, charge us only 100 bucks, but we are stuck with them for three years. It's kind of, yay, I'm stuck with that company for three years. So if I have a shitty service, I got my phone for 100 bucks, but I'm stuck three years with them. Uh, or maybe I want an open platform. So what we created is Firefox OS. It's the OS. We're not building any hardware. And we did this with paid staff, but also with contributors. So there is a lot of people that contribute to create that OS. So two years ago, we decided to create that OS. And we launched the first Firefox OS device six months ago, around uh, June last year. So it's kind of new. It's still a new platform. It's why uh, I don't remember if it was Roy or Matt, you talk about really early adopter stuff, really on the edge. And uh, when we think about Firefox OS, there is the user part. I will go fast on that away. Uh, because I really want to talk about the developer side of the platform. But if you want after, I have some devices here, some different devices with Firefox OS. If you want to test this, just come see me after the presentation. So if you look at the interface, it looks a little bit like Android. The big difference is that it's on web technology. And there is what we call the adaptive app search. So basically, the web is the marketplace for Firefox OS. So if I go on my phone, I go on the adaptive app search, and I want to search about James Bond. I'm going to type James Bond. I don't have to have all those applications installed on my phone. My phone will list me as an example, EMDB. 
So I'm going to be able to see the information about the movie. That's going to list me the movie theater app. So I'm going to be able to see the schedule. That's going to list me all the applications that are related to the content that I'm searching. And those applications won't be installed on my phone. So this is one of the advantages. Of course, there is a marketplace. So user won't be spread on many, many places. There is the marketplace. You're going to submit your app there. You're going to be able to install your application. But as a developer, you don't have to. We don't restrict you. We don't ask you to use the marketplace to deploy your application. If you want, you can build your own marketplace for your internal company, for your software company. I don't know. You don't have to use the marketplace. So when we say open, it's not just about the phone. It's really about the ecosystem. Of course, we highly encourage you to submit your app to the marketplace that's because that's going to be the first place that user will look when would, they're going to uh, want to add or install new application. So on the developer side, as a user, Sorry, as a user, I want to maybe have a more open phone. But as a developer, I want a phone that is easier to use, but also that is easier to develop application. So when we say that this phone is open, that this phone is built on web technology, this is really true. So this is based on HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript. And what we did to enhance the, the experience of the developer is really to add some number of APIs to really help you to build application. I'm going to talk a little more about those APIs after. And what is great is that it's, this platform is so much about web technology that even the OS is made with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It's open source, so you can go on GitHub, you can fork the code, you can do your home build, you can clone the code and, and do whatever you want. Uh, you can participate. You can commit some, uh, some modification to the code if you have a really great feature. So it's not just a Mozilla thing, it's a world thing. So everybody is invited to participate uh, to build Firefox OS. So how is it working behind the scene? So we did not reinvent everything. We use Gunk. So this is the open Linux kernel and drivers. I think it's used in most of the Android phone. So we use that base level for the phone. On top of that, we put Gecko. Gecko is basically uh, the web runtime that we uh, use for Firefox. But what we did is that we put Gecko and we had our APIs that I'm going to talk a little more later that help really developers to use Firefox OS. Remove all the single vendor stuff that probably slow down the, uh, most of the phones here. So we remove the stuff that we don't need as developers and that the user don't need. And we put on top of that the OS version. So Gaia, what we call Gaia, is really the user interface. And this is the OS part. This is what you see when you're playing with a Firefox OS phone. This is made with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So this is really an open phone. You cannot have more open than that. So the benefit of using HTML5 when you think about Firefox OS. This is an inbuilt distribution system. The web is Firefox OS apps. So every application that runs in the browser is going to run in Firefox OS. This is simple technology. You don't have to learn a new technology. Most of the developers do HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Even if you are doing PHP, at some point you're going to have to, do, to use HTML. You're going to have to use CSS. You're going to have to use JavaScript. And if you don't, this is good technology to learn because you're going to be able to build website. You're going to be able to build web application, web games. And those are really great technology. And they are not proprietary technology. Those are managed by the W3C, so a bunch of people, working buddies, uh, get together from different companies, Microsoft, Mozilla, uh, Google, and a lot more vendors working together to make this a standard. This is an evolution of existing practices. So the web API that I'm going to talk later, there are new stuff. But th this is just an evolution of the standard. This is just new element in the standard that we're proposing to uh, the W3C. And of course, I told you this is open, independent, and this is a standard. So just to put some facts around Firefox OS, because I told you it's quite new. We released in the last six months, and I'm probably missing, I think, one country. We released in Spain, in Poland, in Venezuela, Hungary, Colombia, Uruguay, Mexico, Brazil, and Greece. 
We are targeting, I would say, emerging market for most of uh, the launch that we are doing uh, with Firefox OS. We're working with 18 uh, mobile operators and six uh, hardware partners. We already have six phones, so the ZTE Open, the Alcatel One Touch Fire, the Geeks Phone Keon, the Geeks Phone Pig, the LJ FireWeb, and I think we announced a new phone at CES this week, so I'm, I'm not quite sure, so I won't go there, but I see something, uh, I saw something in my email. Why I'm talking about Firefox OS when we didn't launch any phone here? First, that may be helpful for your market to reach new people, to reach those people. And it's not because they don't have the money to pay maybe a 500 bucks iPhone, or maybe it's not because they don't want to pay for a really, really uh, high-end device, that they're not buying apps. And what we're doing with Firefox OS is that it's easier than before, because in those countries, when I want to buy an, app uh, to buy an application, I don't need to have a credit card. That's going to be billed on my operator bill. So it's easy. Uh, the entry level is really easy to buy, to buy application. And also, if you're in Canada, or basically in North America, in a, I would say in US and Canada, uh, ZTE is selling on their, their eBay store. So those are new phones. The ZTE Open, so one of the phones that I have tonight. Uh, and the full price, without any contract, without anything, is usually 100 bucks. So for now, I saw this today when I, I did the new screenshot, and they're having uh, 25 bucks uh, rebate, so it's pretty good. So 75 bucks, you have a really nice smartphone uh, working well that you can order in Canada. So you can starting to use Firefox OS now because those are unlocked phone, so you can use it on Rogers or whatever operator that you're using. So what is a Firefox OS application exactly? So you have two types of application that you can create. A hosted app is basically an application that has, has a developer you will host yourself. So it's why I told you that you don't really have to publish in the marketplace. So I can put this on my own server. I can use GitHub pages. I can use whatever like, server that I have, whatever places that I want to publish my application to, to publish my application. And if I submit that hosted app to the marketplace, that's basically going to be a link between the marketplace and my apps. So if the user goes to the marketplace and wants to search and install your application, you're going to see your application description and everything. You're going to be able to install it, but that's going to get the data from your uh, server. And there's also the package app. And this is what we're used to do with iPhone, with Android, with all the other marketplace. It's basically a zip file where I put all my files for my application, some files, JavaScript, CSS, HTML5, uh, whatever I need to make my application work. I put this in a zip file, and I upload this to uh, the marketplace. To build my application, I can use what I call the vanilla HTML, basically just plain HTML, JavaScript, CSS. I can do this with uh, JavaScript library, so I'm not restricted. But I can use what I call those uh, regular privilege or certified API. So those web, web API that I quickly introduce you, uh, those you can use this to enhance the, uh, the experience of the user on Firefox OS. So today, if you have a web application, a web game, something running in the browser, if you did a good job, and by a good job I mean if you did not use specific vendor prefix, like if you have WebKit everywhere, that's not going to work. But uh, if it's working in a Firefox, the only thing you have to do is to add a manifest file. This is basically a big description file. This is a JSON file, and you're going to have the version number, the name of the developer, the, the link, the launch path, if it's index.html, whatever things. And you're going to have some permission. So this is really the file that defines my application. So today, what you can do, if you have your application, just add a manifest file, and you basically have a Firefox OS application. Of course, that may not be as simple. You may find some stuff that are not quite working or some library that are kind of fuzzy a little bit. But most of the time, most of the developer that I'm working with, it's as easy as adding the manifest file, and you've got a Firefox OS application. So I talk about a web API. Web API are the APIs that we had to Firefox OS. And don't get me wrong, we don't want to have those APIs like proprietary stuff that's going to work only on Firefox OS. So with all those new APIs that we created, we are working with the W3C to make those standards. And if tomorrow one of those APIs are not a standard and they have been refused or something else is coming that is doing the same thing, we're going to change Firefox OS to reflect what is the standard. 
because our goal is really not to make something close, something proprietary. We want to have those in the standard because we think that we need those as developers to create great application. So we're going to win the day that those things will be, uh, will be in, the, uh, in the HTML standard and that other platform will use those and that other browser and other vendor using HTML stuff will use those. So when we talk about web API, there is the level that we call the regular API. So those are, I would say, uh, really API that won't cause any problem to the system. You don't need to certify your application. You can use this in the hosted application, in the package application. So you have things like the ambient light sensor, uh, some web activities that we'll talk a little more later, proximity center, uh, the battery status API, things that you cannot do with HTML today. So you have access to those things. So if we think about the ambient light sensor, how can I use this in my Firefox OS application? It's basically JavaScript. So this is the magic of ev everything around Firefox OS. Is the, we're, we did not create something new. We just had some stuff to JavaScript. We just have some stuff to HTML to make it happen, to give you those tools to create your Firefox OS application. So in that case, if I, if I want to detect the ambient light near my phone, I'm going to be able with JavaScript to do windows that had even listener and check the device, device light, sorry. And with even the value, I'm going to have a value in lux. So is it small, is it big, is it between 50 or, or, or 10 thousands? And let me show you how it's working. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use a real device. So I have my Geek Phones key on here. I'm going to connect this. Uh, well, I'm going to find the connector on my computer. going to have the small screen here so you're going to be able to see to see the phone let me scroll this a little bit so what is great when we talk about Firefox OS application is that no matter which OS you're using Linux Windows OS X the only tools you need is Firefox and the simulator or the app manager that I'm going to show you so you use the IDE you want. You're not restricted to your specific IDE. Uh, IDE. Use whatever you want. I'm using Sublime. You can use Notepad on Windows. You can use TextMate. You can use Visual Studio. Name it. You can use whatever that can create HTML, JavaScript, uh, CSS. So basically any text editor to create your application. And you're going to need to use Firefox because you're going to need to use the simulator. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go in the web developer here. I'm going to call App Manager. And App Manager is really my dashboard for everything that is Firefox OS. So this is basically the place that I will be able to test my application, to manage my application that I want to push on my phone. So now I connected my phone to the computer. On OS X, it's pretty, it's pretty quick. On Windows, you're going to have to install a driver. On Linux, you're going to have to change uh, one or two things, but it's pretty, it's pretty straight to the point. So when I'm connected to, and let me know if you don't see it, but when I'm connected to uh, my app manager, I'm going to have two choices. I'm going to be able to connect to my real device or use a simulator, because now I'm going to use my device to show you an API that is not uh, simulated, and, uh, that's not working in the simulator right now, like the MBN Lite. Uh, but we don't all have devices, so you can test with the simulator if you want. In that case, I'm going to connect to my phone. And I'm going to use, uh, I have two options here. So let me know if you don't see the phone. So I have two options here. I told you about the package and the hosted app. So a hosted app is basically a link. So if I have my application somewhere, let me try this with, I uh, forgot link. Uh, we have one application here on the GitHub pages. So basically, this is my Firefox OS application running in the browser. But what I will do, I will add that hosted app. If I click plus, my application will add in the app manager. And for some reason, now it's not working because there is probably, uh, if I read the error, there is a problem with the manifest file of my hosted application. So I can't test it right now. But what I will do, I will remove this one. I will add a package app. 
So I told you package app is basically a zip file where I put everything I need to run my application. When I'm debugging on my, uh, on my computer, I don't have to compress everything. I don't have to create the archive. Uh, I just need to point this to my folder where all my application is. And I point to the folder where I have my manifest.web app. I'm going to click open. Yes, this is working. So now I added my Firefox OS application to my dashboard. I have some information about who made that application. It's not me, I'm not Robert, but this is an open source project on GitHub, and I'm going to talk a little more about the boilerplate. But I have access here to all the manifest information. So everything I put in the manifest.web app uh, is there, so I can modify it there uh, directly. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to push my application that is on my computer, on my phone that is connected to uh, to my computer. I'm just going to close this. This is not a good view. Oh, you see it with the webcam. This is, um, this is the only way I have to show the application on a computer, and this is a Java application, and it's kind of not working once in a while, so this is not a big deal. I hope you, yeah, oh, awesome, Matt. Matthew Potter, the magician of the video. Thanks, man, this saved my life again. So, I have my application here. I'm gonna try not to put my finger in front of application. So, I have my phone, uh, I connected, I installed, put my application in the, uh, in the dashboard. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to connect to my phone. I'm going to restart the admin and I'm going to connect to my phone. I'm using a beta version of Firefox and this is also a beta version of the App Manager and why I'm showing you a beta version is just because uh, this is the latest things that we're going to use really soon. So there is the simulator that we can use but I can't use it on, uh, Fire on uh, OS X Maverick. If I go on Web Developer, uh, I can install an add-on. This is called the Firefox OS Simulator and basically I'm going to have that dashboard. So this is the first version. Oh, you can see it. Uh, so this is the first, actually, I have, uh, can you show my screen? Yes, you can. Yeah. Tell me uh, if you're not seeing something that I'm sure that you're seeing, or maybe you're all sleeping. Yeah. Are you listening? I'm there. Fred, my name. How are you? Good? Fine. Awesome. So <laughs> there is a Firefox OS simulator, and basically this is the first version of the dashboard that we created, working well, but we were not able to do remote debugging. So uh, what we did, we created the app manager that is like a, 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 a Firefox OS simulator on steroid. Uh, this is really the dashboard on steroid. The only thing is that it's working with 1.2 and the simulator is still working. So if you're using Firefox 26, you can still use the simulator, except if you update to Maverick on OS X. I have no idea, we have a huge bug with this, and I'm not quite sure if we're gonna fix this because we're moving from the purely dashboard simulator to what I'm showing you, uh, the app manager. So let's try it again. And no, okay. Ah, oh, this is it. You only have to, you always have to have the uh, demo god playing tricks. No, unplug the phone. That was stupid. <coughs> I told you, huh? this is new stuff. Let's close this to be sure. Why oh, are you so quiet? This is my accent, huh? You love my accent? Yeah. This is cute, huh? No? Okay. Let's do it again. Yay! Awesome. So I'm going to re-add my application. Now you can switch. Oh, okay, we have the camera. Let me know if you don't see it and I put my finger on top of it. So I have my application. What I'm going to do, I'm going to click Update. And that's going to install my application on my phone. So now, my application is on my phone. I start my application. I have uh, the boilerplate application, and this is basically a project that one of my coworkers started, uh, Robert Nyman, 
And uh, this is an application that have a lot of web API in it. And it's really a demo application, so you can see how it's working on Firefox OS, how you can implement those different features. This is really not a good night for me. This is always when you tell people, yeah, this is a really good OS, everything's working fine, no bug. Actually, I'm using Firefox OS day to day, and everything is working well. Maybe it's just that phone. It's why we have many phones. Let's try another one. Update. Finally, I can show you what I wanted to show you. So uh, look at the application, basically. So I was talking about the MBN Lite. So this application uh, have a lot of web API and web activities, and this is basically a demo app. But because it's on GitHub, you can go there, fork the code, do whatever you want, and uh, you can, I hope, not copy-paste the code because you won't learn if you copy-paste stuff. But at least you know how it's working, and you can see how it's working. So if I go to the MBN Lite, you can't see, and that's going to be. Yeah. So, uh, th yeah, that's probably going to be. That's probably going to be a case where I'm going to say, "Trust me, there is number on the phone," <laughs> and depending if I put my N on it or not, we're going to see the number of uh, looks change, or uh, no. Let me know after I'm going to do a private demo to people that care about seeing the ambient light. And uh, maybe I can try the other application, see if it's, no, that's not working with this phone. So basically, with JavaScript, you can do a demo that nobody sees, but it's working. <laughs> There's nights like this. The battery status. This is not something you can do today. When you're doing web application, you cannot see the battery level. You cannot have information about the battery. And that could be something helpful. I may want to build an application, and at some point, I want to know if uh, the battery is going to die soon. Because if it's the case, I may want to save information so the user won't lose what he have to do. Again, JavaScript comes to the rescue. So those new API, you use navigator.battery. And you check after the battery level. You can have the information on the charging time, uh, on the discharging time. So how much time before my uh, phone will be dead? And I can, of course, have some even listener. Because I don't want to check this every like five seconds. I mean, uh, that's going to be terrible code. And I'm going to kill the battery by doing this, by checking if the battery is, is dead. So uh, I can have even listener on level change, on changing charge, and uh, changing time change. So yeah, really good name. But, so you can check those things. Again, with JavaScript, uh, you're going to be able to see the same thing. I'm not sure you're going to be able to see it with the camera, but that's going to be another case Then, trust me. I have this button, check battery, and I have the battery level now at 25%. Yeah, so I have the battery at 25%. Sorry about that. Uh, I know that the battery is charging because I'm connected to USB. To USB. So that could be something helpful. Uh, for me day to day when I'm uh, building my application. So what I'm going to do my next demo, I'm going to use the simulator. You're going to be able to see it on the screen. But trust me, it's connected on USB. <coughs> on USB, sorry? Dim the screen? Change the, change the brightness of the screen? The yeah, but I'm going to use the simulator. It's working well. It's, it's, that's going to be a good way for me to show that the simulator is working well. But the 2D mode that i uh, shown you, or that i tried to show you, uh, the battery and the ambient light, uh, it's not working with the simulator, because that really need a real phone to be able to detect those things. There's the web API that we call uh, the privileged web APIs. So those are uh, uh, another level of uh, API. Those are privileged. So you cannot use them on an hosted app. Because hosted app, you can basically do whatever you want. It's on your server. You don't have to submit this to the marketplace. You don't have to have your application certified by uh, someone at Mozilla. We trust you. Those API are really like uh, 
not, not harmful. So you cannot do something wrong with the data to the user. But when it comes to those ones, they're a little bit more tricky. So we think about the browser API, the contacts API, the diverse storage. We have six, seven API like this privilege API. So what you're going to have to do is to create a package app if you want to use those. And you're going to have to submit this to the marketplace and someone will check if your application is doing good or, or really shitty things with uh, the user's data. So this is basically the same process that any other marketplace. The only thing is that we try to open the more API that we can, so give you access without having to uh, work with the marketplace. So there is the browser API. And we'll tell you, Fred, why a browser API. Hello? I, I didn't see you with the light. Yeah. Uh, for the, the checking of those package apps, is that Mozilla that's doing that? Yeah, actually, it's uh, there is some paid, paid staff and, and some volunteer that are doing this. But uh, sorry. Repeat question. Oh, okay. Sorry, I need to repeat the question. So uh, for the verification, the certification of the app is it Mozilla. Yes, uh, this is Mozilla. So there's people in Mozilla, and the process is really transparent. So uh, you're gonna know how many other applications are before you. So if maybe you're the 50 in list, uh, because a lot of people submit the application to you. So this is pretty cool, because I really hate the black box way of certifying in, in other marketplace, where you just don't know if it's going to be like six hours or 10 days. Uh, so at least you know where you are in the list. If it's working, if your application is accepted, you're going to get that beautiful email. And hey, thanks, guys. Uh, everything was perfect. Congratulations. Your absence is in the marketplace. Uh, if it's not the case, you're going to have a report with all the details. What's happening? Where in the code? What's the problem? Pointing to documentation. So this is really a transparent process. In every update as well? Every update, yeah. So every update for the package app, we're going to have to certify again because you may have changed your code to do some evil stuff. And you know that you're evil, so it's why we check your stuff. Uh, when it comes to the hosted apps, because it's on your server and you can do evil stuff, uh, you can update the number of time you want. The only thing is that just care about the user, so don't put code that is not working because you submitted once to the marketplace. That created a link to your application, so when users go to the marketplace, they can search for your application, they're going to see it, they're going to be able to install it. So if you update a new version that is not working, that's just going to be bad for you. So if I come back to the browser, there is a browser API on a platform that is made basically of a browser thing, web technology, that also have a browser application. So my Firefox OS is made with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I have a Firefox OS browser in my Firefox OS, and I have a browser API. So why do I have a browser API? If you try to give access to, I don't know, Twitter, or I'm building a remember the milk application, I don't know if you know this, it's a to-do list. And basically, if I want to access the uh, to-do list of my user, it needs to give access to my application. It needs to connect to the web with his username, password, connect to the services, and say, hey, yes, I want to approve a uh, Fred application and give access to my data so we can like retry my list and be able to write my stuff. And the process is that the user log in, give me access, the service return a key in the link. So I don't want the user to go in the browser, do that stuff, trying to copy paste the code and be sure that it copy paste the right thing. And that, that may gonna work, you know users how they are. So I have a browser inside my application. And the magic thing here is that I created an iframe, but I had the must browser keyword. And this is where the magic happened. That will become uh, a browser, uh, that I will be able to use the browser API after. So in that case, I'm going to be able to add event listener to all those events. So what I did for my Remember the Milk application, I had, uh, it's the mouse browser location change. I had that listener, and I know that when the user enter his username password, the URL will change. I don't care because now he's in the authorization page. When you click authorize, Remember the milk will send a new link with the key that I need to get access to the to-do list of my application. So now I will know that I have the key, I will be able to retrieve the key and list all the, li uh, the to-do uh, tasks of my user. So I have that browser element that I can use, that browser API that will help me to do those kind of uh, things. And you see this with Twitter, Facebook, and different uh, services. 
there is the contact web API, so I'm going to be able to build uh, to create basic contacts. Again, JavaScript, I'm going to say it again, 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 it's always JavaScript, it's really helpful. And there is those APIs that we call certify API. Those are kind of tricky because you can't use them. Fred, you're making me losing my time. You're talking about API that I can't use. Uh, actually, those APIs are mostly for OS application or OEM, like if Alcatel build the phone and they really need to have one application specific to, to their phone in the OS, they're going to have access to those APIs because they're a partner. So why I'm talking about those ones, like the camera API, the uh, uh, permission API, the web SMS API, the web telephony API, is because, you know us, Mozilla, the goal is to be more open. So those are really protected, privileged, certified API. There is no bigger level than that. But we need to keep those in mind because at some point, we may decide to change the level of protection of those API. We may decide that, hey, camera API, not that bad. It cannot hurt the user, we cannot make trouble. We would maybe change the production and, and put camera API to a privileged API so we'll be able to use it in a package app or move it to a regular API and going to be able to use it in a Nosted app or a package app. So it's good to know that they are there. Don't take too much time to learn all those things because you cannot use them right now, but it's just good to know that they are there. So I talk about camera API, telephony API, and I saw some face a little bit worry in the room say, hey, I cannot take pictures with the phone. I cannot create something like this. Yep. Uh, just a quick question. You mentioned a few layers in the attack um, of OS. So, and then now you mentioned that there are so many APIs that are protected. Should the user just download the entire package and, and change the level of protection on the API? The only t uh, so the question is that there is three level of uh, APIs. The user can just download the package and change the uh, level of protection. Actually, it's that at the at the OS level. So what you would be able to do is to download uh, boot to Gecko. The, this is basically Firefox OS code. So this is a code name for Firefox OS. When you have a device called Firefox OS, it's because an OEM work with us to certify that the phone really meets some criteria, basic criteria that we want to have with those phones. But Tomorrow you can, in your garage, uh, download boot to gecko and create a phone. You can call it Firefox OS if you don't work with us, but basically, just to explain boot to, Ge boot to gecko. So you can download boot to gecko, change those, those permissions, create your own build, put this on your phone, and you should have access to those API. So I know someone who did it. He wanted to do a slow motion picture, camera, video kind of thing, and, and we did not have uh, that possibility because we're not able to use the camera API to do what we want. So this is something you can do. But in that case, you're going to be able to be harmful only to you or people that will install your build. So that's going to be still protected uh, in Firefox OS. So I was talking about the camera API, and, and uh, like I said, I saw some faces in the room that was like, hey, I cannot take like picture as a developer. Uh, yes and no. So you cannot use the camera web API, but we have another API that we call web activity. So this is a list of activities that you can use to do those kind of things. So there is the browse, web activity, the dial, the open, the pick, uh, the record, the uh, view, the share. And what's going to happen if I'm using the pick? It's because in my application, I need to use an image. I don't know, I, I have a drawing application and I want the user to be able to draw on the picture. So I'm not giving you access, as Firefox OS, I'm not giving you access to get all the files you want on the phone because there is some privacy issue. Maybe I don't want you, you as a developer to use all the picture. So I'm, I'm going to have access to that web activity that we call the pick activity. So basically, again, JavaScript, I'm going to do new mouse activity. The name is the pick activity. This is the name we gave it. And I'm going to say, hey, what I need now, it's images. I just want JPEG. So I'm going to say the data type is going to be image JPEG. What's going to happen when I'm going to run that code? You're going to see the screen to the right. So you're going to see that screen, and we're going to need user input. At that point, the user will decide if he selects a wallpaper, an image that he has in the gallery, or a picture, or if he wants to take a new one. So you're going to need user input for most of those web activities, but that's going to give you the permission to do something with the data of the user, but with the permission of the user. In that case, I need to know if the user selects something or just cancel the operation. So again, 
on my activity that I created, the screen before, the var activity. I'm going to say, hey, activity on success. Hey, I got my image. I can do whatever I want with the image because the user gave me the access to that image. So I'm going to create a blob, and I'm going to create my image, and I'm going to be able to do whatever I want with the images. I'm going to be able also to do uh, activity on error. So in that screen, if the user click cancel, because it changes mine, I need to be able to handle this as a developer. So usual stuff, you know those things. It's just to let you know that you can do this with JavaScript. We have the stuff you need to do with. The dial, do I really want you to call who you want as a developer in your application? I don't think so. So it's why there is the dial web API that you cannot use for certified application, but there is that web activity that we call dial. Again, you must activity name dial. This is the name of the activity, pretty obvious. Data number, set a phone number, this is the phone number that I want to call. What's going to happen? The telephone, uh, the telephony app will open, the phone number will be there, the user will have to press the green button. So it will have to do the final call. Uh, there was a, no? Okay. I thought it was funny joke. No? Final call? No? Okay. Oh my god, those French, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks, for those French people. Uh. So uh, you can do this with contact to new web contacts contact. Again, I'm going to be able to create a contact with way more information, putting my names, email, company. Again, I'm not going to spam the user with many contacts that I don't know. Again, the screen will be there. The information will be filled. I will have as a user to click done or to click no, I don't want to change information in this. So it, again, you have access to those things. But what is great is that you can, yeah. Yeah, with the web API contact, you're going to be able to check the contact uh, if it's already there. Quick other question. Yep. Uh, back to the uh, uh, certification process. Yep. Is there a cost for that? How much is it? Oh, yeah, really good question. So the question is, is, is there a cost for certification? Let me start from the beginning. <laughs> when I had two years old, oh no. Uh, so there is no cost for nothing. So nothing, nothing, nothing. So if you certify your application, there is no cost. To publish an application to the marketplace, there is no cost. Uh, to start building application, there is no cost. I like to say that word. There is no cost. This is good, huh? No? This is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there is no cost. So there is no cost. <laughs> yeah, uh, thanks. Did you ever have a permission manager? Yes, if you go in the phone, uh, in the settings, you're going to be able to, let me show you, no, not the good one, this one. Disconnect, simulator. So is there any permission for the user? If I go on settings, uh, have permission. So it's a little bit on the same principle. Uh, if I go on browser, uh, I know the browser, the only thing that he asked me is geolocation. For now, it's at ask. So every time that the browser will need my geolocation, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need to approve it, or I can do grant or deny it. So I can change those there. So those are the permission that I ask it in my manifest file. So I can, as a user, change this. Sorry. Nice. No, that was good. Yeah. How do you guys make your money? <laughs> I, I know you're a nonprofit. This is the question that I ask when uh, they approach me for the job. So, <laughs> hey, I want to be sure that I'm going to have a paycheck. Uh, actually, yeah, this is a nonprofit. So, there's a lot of people that are giving money to Mozilla. And uh, we're making money with uh, Search Engine, too. So, it's really not totally in Firefox OS that we're making money because we're not setting the code. But uh, because Firefox OS uh, is still a really uh, popular browser, uh, when you search in Firefox, uh, you're helping me to uh, pay my food and uh, my beer. Right. So use Firefox and search a lot. <laughs> um, if I'm selling my application yep. through your marketplace, yep. do you guys take a percentage? Uh, we're going to take a small percentage. It's 20% uh, uh, is going to have to, uh, and, and that's not going to be just us. That's going to be the uh, operator because when we sell the application, that's going to go in the bill at the operator. So they're going to keep a small amount. We're going to keep a small amount. So depending on the country, it's kind of 20% ish uh, on the application. Yeah. 
sorry, I, this is good. Would, would you like to do the presentation with me? Because I, yeah, I, I, I forgot all those things, but this is, those are great questions. Thanks. Thanks. Next one, we'll do it together. Uh, so what I was talking about, web activity, this is good because I can, as an application, use those activities. But I, I will probably want also to be a receiver, to be an handler, to be able to manage those web activities. So if I want my application to be there when an application needs to pick an image, as an example, maybe I am a Flickr application and I want the user to be able to easily select pictures from my Flickr account. So I'm going to be able to uh, tell Firefox OS that, hey, if someone calls an activity, in that case, with navigator.muzz uh, set message and learn, if someone calls an activity, run that function, and in that function, I'm going to check, hey, if it's a pick activity, I can handle this. Let me handle this. So what's going to happen is that in my manifest file, again, so the manifest file is really important, I'm going to tell Firefox OS, hey, for activities, the pick activities, if it's a JPEG and a PNG, because this is the only two things that I'm managing, I want to handle this, and if the user select my application to handle this, call the index HTML pick. So this is a way for me to be an handler of those activities. So you can extend the OS as much as you want with those applications. So really good things to have in the browser. What is great is that all the web activities that are working on a Firefox OS work on Firefox for Android. So if you're building your Firefox OS application, actually, I would say, if you're building a web application and you decide to add some web activities to it, that's going to work in your browser, that's going to work in Firefox OS, that's going to work in Firefox for Android. Actually, it's not true. The, the web activities won't work in Firefox right now totally, but we're working on most of them. But Firefox for Android, that's going to work. So this is another way to reach more people with your code. So how to start? Because you all want to start. So the easiest, the easiest way is not to build an unicorn. It's, the, it's really that if you have a web application, a, a web game, uh, anything that is working on a browser, you can just port it to Firefox OS by putting the manifest file. Most of the time, that's going to be the only step they have to do. Sometimes you may have, let's be honest, eh? everything is not always 100% magical, so you may have some trouble with some libraries, some stuff, but uh, I'm working with a lot of developers. This is part of my job to work with them to be sure that they're able to publish their application. If they have any technical question, they rely to me. And uh, most of the developer, this is pretty quick. If you do a great job, if you have good code, it's working in the browser, have the developer port every games that you have, 30 minutes per game to port them to Firefox OS. I would say that 30 minutes in my life to reach more people, not a big deal. So this is why the unicorn, this is like running on a unicorn. This is as magical as this. I think that this is really good. Do this again because I really don't see those guys with the light. Yeah. Hey. Um, hey. Yeah, you spoil my next slide. Thanks. <laughs> so yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We need to talk after. So uh, the question was: uh, Is there a way to port phone gaps application? Uh, the answer is yes and no. So no, because it's not already in the official build. Yes, if you go check the code, there is support for Firefox OS. So we are still working with uh, PhoneGap to make this happen. But from the people I talk with, it, it's really quick. It's working well. And uh, some people didn't want to try it yet because it was not an official release. So I worked with another developer who had a PhoneGap application. It took him two hours to remove everything that was PhoneGap specific because he didn't want to use PhoneGap and he published his application after. So there's two ways, but I would say I, I don't have any news on when, but I know we are working really closely. But as I said, if you're going to GitHub, you, you check the code and you're going to be able to do it. Yes? Um, how closely tied would my application be to the operating system itself? Like, uh, let's say, darker side of things, I wrote an infinite loop that was consuming resources endlessly. Now, in a browser, if I did that, eventually the browser would crash, slow down my computer, and eventually just bring it down to a crawl and halt. How would that uh, sort of scenario play out in Firefox? 
This is this is and what you're gonna see. Uh, what is the screen, Matthew? You got it once or two. This is kind of like a sorry uh, with a non happy face. So at some point, that's just gonna crash if you're doing something really special or that is not working. The what? Yeah, a tab crash. So this, this is kind of the equivalent of a tab crash. So that's gonna that that that's not gonna kill the phone. It won't kill the phone. No, and, and word case, I would say because every time you see that won't happen, someone will be able to make it happen. Uh, like because this is a phone, there is the power button, so you can just like push the button, you reboot the phone, and you're gonna be good. Worst case scenario. But this is why we're testing testing most of the applications when they're a package app is that you can make more trouble with those applications. And if you submit your application to the marketplace, even if you host a tap, we uh, would probably check it just to be sure that the first version makes sense. So I told you to start, uh, if you're using Firefox 26, you can use the Firefox OS simulator if you're not on Maverick. Uh, it's only for the 1.1. So Actually, Firefox OS, this, the latest stable release is 1.1, Firefox OS 1.1. So I have two phones with 1.1, one, uh, one with 1.0 that is not quite totally stable, and two with 1.2. Uh, so this is a good version. You can still use it. I will show you a little more App Manager, how you can debug your application and you can work with this. Uh, the only thing is that with App Manager, it's only for Firefox OS 1.2 and plus. So we also have the simulator for 1.3. 1.3. Uh, the downside is that now we're mostly looking for 1.1. When you submit your application, we're testing on a real device with 1.1, so you need to be sure that it's compatible with uh, Firefox OS 1.1. But uh, really soon, uh, App Manager will be the probably the only way to go. How many of you know that we have developer tools in Firefox? And I'm not talking about Firebug. A lot of people just, oh, fuck, no, oh, Firebug. <laughs> So yeah, we have some developer tools, and what is great is that the tools are really awesome, but they're working well for Firefox OS. So let me show you a little bit how it's working, because now everything was beautiful. We have an application that was quasn't quite not working at the beginning, but now it's working. I have my browser, it's cool, I can use the tool I want, but yeah, there is usually two problems when, when you're building web application. Either the UI sucks, you have problem with CSS, and, and it's just not working, or you have problem with JavaScript, the logic, at some point. It's basically those two things, or HTML, of course, but like, it's basically in those two things. So let me, simulator is already there. So, I have my simulator here. Let me scroll this. So, that already push, no. So, as you, as you can see, the simulator is really like uh, it's Firefox OS running, so it's like the phone. Uh, every people that already built a uh, mobile application, usually you start with the simulator, because it's, even if the process e is easy, it's kind of painful at some point to like work with real device, because you always have to push the application. So you do all your testing in the simulator, everything you can do there, after this you test on the real device. So I have the simulator here, uh, working pretty well. I'll just Starting again, just to be sure. I don't look full again. <laughs> yeah, to have a clean app. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna press debug. And now my app manager is connected to my simulator. So he uploaded Firefox OS Blur Plate, the, the application that I show you. Uh, he updated on the simulator and it starts debugging mode. So now I have all the tools that I usually have in Firefox. So it's not just for Firefox OS, you can debug any uh, web application. So I have the console where I have all the errors, everything that could be wrong. Uh, because it's, uh, it's a web application, I can do Windows that alert uh, 42, do you know what it is, 42? You're gonna see the pop-up there. Uh, I can do this in the console. Uh, I have the inspector. The inspector is amazing. This is probably one of my best tools because uh, I don't know why I always have problem with CSS. And when you go on complicated page, you not totally know which element and which element. So if I select something, you're gonna see, watch the simulator. You're gonna see that when I click on the code in the inspector, that's gonna select the element on my application. So you see the little rectangle. So this is the same thing that you probably see in other tools. So it's working pretty well, but I have the other way around. If I click Compose Mail, whoop, you run it, but you selected the right button on my application. Let me close this one, get back there. 
So I can select easily with the inspector. And what I can do, if I go back maybe in my buddy, uh, I can do background color, let's do red. I didn't have the time to, ty to type the D and it's already there. So I can do some modification directly in the inspector, in the CSS and the HTML. I can debug. This is really amazing because most of the time, as I said, when there is logic problem, eh, it's in the JavaScript. So I finally can do some debug in my Firefox OS application. I can do this on a remote device. If you're using App Manager with a phone with 1.2, you're going to be able to do remote debugging. If you're using the Firefox OS simulator dashboard, uh, that is the one that is not working with Maverick, uh, you're not going to be able to do remote debugging on the phone on a real device, but you're going to be able to do debugging on the simulator. So this is still good. But now I can do both. So now I'm working on my simulator. And I can put a debug point on, on the pick image function. And if I click pick image, my application will stop there. So let me know if you don't see. My application will stop there. So what's going to happen now is that I have all the options. Like I can step in, I can step out, uh, I can do whatever I want. Has any debug tool, any ID that I can debug my code. I have the watch list to the right. So if there is something that I want to uh, watch and it's not there. I can double click, do a right click, and it's a selection to watch expression. And in my case, I'm going to be able to see the value. Now it's undefined because I watch the expression while in my animals function. So it's, it's a good behavior. It's undefined. But I can watch my variable. So it's really easier to uh, work with it. If I want, as I said, I can hide remove, but I have those really things that I found really, uh, really awesome because you know sometimes you debug, it's kind of working, or you put too much debug point, it's like eh, it's taking forever to go to the ends that I want. So I can just remove, temporarily remove those debug point, and I'm going to be able to run my application that's going to work well, and I can head them back after really easily. So those are really great tools that help me to build my application. There is also the style editor. So I plain. I play uh, in the inspector on the CSS, but I can do this there. I see all the files that has been loaded in my application. I cancel this. And I can modify uh, those things. So let's go back to, I don't know. I really like the changing the background color. So I can add this there. Of course, that won't be saved in my application, but you know the process. Like if I did something with CSS, the button is not right aligned. I will go back in Sublime. I will find the right file. I will go there, change the code, save the file. Uh, go back in the App Manager. I'm going to update my application. I'm going to push it again in the simulator. I'm going to see the result. Yeah, too much time. If it's just for a small change, I'm going to try it now in the style editor. And after this, if that makes sense, I'm going to change it in my application. And I can add temporary file if I really want to add uh, more stuff or just remove, just remove some of the uh, CSS file. And let's see what's happening. This is the new CSS day. So we can see that our app's still working, really, really ugly, but uh, still working. So. There's the uh, shader editor that doesn't totally make sense for now. And there's the profiler that I won't show you. But if you're working with the hosted app, what you can do is that if you start the profiler, you run your application, you're going to see all files that has been loaded and how much time it took and how much time it took to load them. So sometimes it may not be your code. It may be that, hey, it took a lot of times to load my application. Or I want to see uh, in, in which order my files are loading, so you can see this with the profiler. So really good tools, not just good for Firefox OS, use it to any, uh, any uh, web application that you're creating. But this is good to know that if you're building Firefox OS application, you're going to have the tool you need to uh, do some debugging and do some testing. Yeah. There is two things happening. So uh, to be totally honest, we may have some problem on those things because we are not creating hardware. We are not managing update. So uh, some phones, the, uh, the update to 1.1 really quickly. Some other phone, they did not release the, uh, the new version yet because for every phones, 
for the way it's working is that usually uh, the, the OEM will do some tests, we'll test it on the phone, we'll see if it's working or not. After this, the telecommunication company will do some tests, we'll, and at some point we'll ship it. So now we're lucky that most of the time we're not dealing totally with the telecommunication company, this is the OEM, but they still have uh, the decision to when they're gonna publish. But because those phones are mostly open, uh, most of them, some of them there's still stuff that they need to fix, the OEM need to fix. But uh, if I take an example like the Geek's phone, uh, working pretty well, I can just, if really there's something that annoy me and the OEM did not release the version that I wanted, again, it's open, download the code, create my own build. There is some information on what I was going to show the Mozilla Developer Network. You have all the documentation to do it yourself. It's, it's kind of a ninja trick. Uh, you need to be a little bit techy to create your own build because there is a lot of step. But once you manage this, you can do it by yourself. Yep. Um, I have the, the uh, Kindle phone, and uh, it's not super powerful, obviously, it's a ten dollar phone. But I'm wondering, uh, do they have those sorts of steps for like other phones uh, to help people? Like, really Sorry, do we have the the, yeah, the other step? Yeah, if you, if you go, it depends on the phone. So if you go on the Mozilla Developer Network, you're gonna have the steps to build uh, your own uh, boot to Gecko uh, OS. If, uh, like recently, ZTE released the version 1.1 for, I don't know where I put this phone, but another Firefox OS phone that we have ZTE open, they finally released the 1.1. So, uh, of course, we encourage people to go to the official way to do official uh, build. So what we did, we did a blog post on the X blog. I'm going to talk a little bit about this later to show how to upgrade those. So it depending mostly on the OEM, but there is still a generic way to build your application, uh, your OS, sorry. So uh, the Mozilla Developer Network, if you have one link to remember, uh, this is where all the documentation is, uh, not just about Firefox OS, so anything about web technology that is open, that is standard, HTML, CSS, JavaScript is there. Really great thing, if you want to contribute, uh, please go ahead because this is not a Mozilla, just a Mozilla uh, work, this is really uh, a work with a lot of volunteers. I was talking about the Axe blog, a really good place is if you want to uh, have technical blog posts, so this is hacks.mozilla.org. Uh, my team, the evangelist team, we're running that blog. Uh, if you have any technical blog posts that you would like to write about anything, uh, you, you, you really like web components, or you want to write something, let us know. We're always, sorry, we're always looking for technical content. Uh, so this blog post, just technical stuff around web technology and Firefox OS. So Stack Overflow, it's pretty, I was going to say it's pretty new. Stack Overflow, it's not new, but we're using Stack Overflow now for every Firefox OS question. So if you don't know Stack Overflow, it's probably one of the biggest forums for technical questions, really great place to go if you have a question. Uh, there is a lot of people volunteering to answer questions. It's not Mozilla, it's just a, uh, it's Stack Exchange, Stack Exchange uh, that are running Stack Overflow. And uh, we have a specific tag, uh, Firefox OS. If you have any question, don't email me directly. Go on Stack Overflow, ask you a question. It's not that I don't want to help, but there is two really good goals when you do this. First, people will be able to see a question. So when I'm gonna answer your question, uh, that's gonna help other people because before asking you a question, you're gonna search on the internet before uh, asking a question. So you may find the answer on Stack Overflow. So we are kind of building a big FAQ by doing this. And ask your question on Stack Overflow. Send me an email after with the link. And, and if I have the answer, I will go and I will answer it. So, but if I don't have the time, I'm traveling, I'm on vacation, I just don't know the answer to your question because I don't know everything that is happening with Firefox OS. Maybe someone else will be able to answer before me or will, will give you better answers. So it's always, it's, it's always in the matter of being more open with those things. So if you really have a private question with the code that you don't want to share or, or something that you may not want to be public, feel free to send me an email. But most of the time I will say, hey, did you think about Stack Overflow? Because I want other people to uh, be able to see the answers to all the questions. There are some candies coming with this. I told you about the Firefox OS boilerplate. I showed you. Uh, go on GitHub. This is a free project. My uh, coworker and friends, Robert Nyman, started the project. Uh, 
when we started Firefox OS, when we started to release Firefox OS, and this is really a good application. This is a boilerplate, so this is a good application to show you many web API web activities. Not everything is there, because when we have time, we add some stuff, but if you see something missing, you want to contribute, contribute go ahead. Uh, we really need those, because this is always a project that most of the people starting to really put their ends with Firefox OS start with. JS uh, Fiddle. How many of you know GS Fiddle? Really great place to prototype in. Oh, nice. Really good place to prototype or to show demo or to share code with other people. So good thing, the guy from GS Fiddle worked at Muslo and like Firefox OS, so he had two really cool features. If you append webapp.manifest to your GS Fiddle link, you're going to be able to install the application in the Firefox OS simulator. So you can just put your code there, uh, add webapp.manifest and test it in the simulator. If you do, dash uh, Firefox uh, slash Firefox OS dot HTML, you're going to be able to install the application on your phone. So you don't have to host your application somewhere. You can just use GS Fiddle to test this, to share the code, and to test on the simulator on a real device. So pretty cool. Because Firefox OS application, they're a web application, we don't ask you to follow a strict guideline. Of course, for some specific things like the icons of the application, we have some guidelines. But for the rest, Make your application like you want. And actually, I would nearly suggest you not to go with a Firefox OS look because you don't want to manage three, four, five kind of uh, application. You have your web application that is working on Firefox OS. But if you want, have the same team of Gaia. You can go on buildingfirefoxos.com, if I'm not wrong, but the link is at the end of my presentation. And you have what we call some building blocks, some CSS transitions, some code that you can just reuse in your application. How many of you know Web Components? Really cool thing, really fast working. Uh, it, it's basically uh, interacting, interacting directly with the browser. What we did at Mozilla, we, we did a project called Brick, and those are basically a bundle of reusable, there's some word in English that I'm struggling, reusable UI component that you can use uh, that, that will be really fast uh, when you run this in the browser, but also when you run this on Firefox OS. So go check. This is a new project that we started a couple of weeks ago, Brick, uh, web component is uh, standard for the W3C. So what's next? I promise you, I'll stop talking after. We're going to be able to get some tickets for FITC. You're going to be wrong if you have a kitty picture in your presentation. This is a successful presentation when you have this. So uh, some people are working on what we call the app maker. So this is basically uh, kind of what you see, what you get to create application in the web. So you're going to be able to drag and drop components, drag and drop buttons. So that's going to give the opportunity to people that are not coder to create like small Firefox OS application, or even for a developer or designer to do some prototyping and show uh, something visual to the user or the customer. And that's going to be good also for, uh, uh, for those, uh, those uh, maybe those kids that want to learn how to code part of web makers and all those things. So really good uh, thing. It's still better version, but if you search for app maker, uh, you're going to be able to find it. And of course, Firefox OS, it's only the beginning. So we're going to have more web API. We're going to have more features. There is a lot of things coming, like the calendar API, uh, the web NFC, that's going to be pretty amazing. The web USB, that's going to be also amazing. So those things are coming. I don't have any like time frame, but I know that's going to be there. And those are just a quick preview of what's coming. So as I told you, we released Firefox OS uh, kind of six months ago. We started to work on this two years ago, if I'm not wrong, and it's really only the beginning. So this is a new platform. Uh, this is there for you. This is there for the web. And, and just keep an eye on it. So when you're building a web application, because you saw today or tonight or this evening, that it's quite easy to port your application and use it on Firefox OS, why not take a couple of minutes, a couple of hours, and take your web application and make it work with Firefox OS, you're going to be able to reach a new market. You're going to be able to reach a new audience to probably have new customers and new user. So there is a couple of resources. If you plan, or if you want, or if you're already building a Firefox OS application, let me know. Ping me, Twitter, LinkedIn, email, Facebook, whatever the way you prefer. Let me know. I want you to know. I want to know what you're building. I want to see. I want to test it. I want to play with it. Just let me know. I'm always looking to see what people that I know, people that I met, uh, are building. Last but not least, 
if someone really liked Firefox OS and want to talk about it, and that's your business, that's your company, and another user group, you can just use those slides. Uh, they're creative common. So feel free to contact me, uh, fharper at mozilla.com. Uh, on Twitter, I'm a big fan on Twitter, at fharper. Don't forget the Axe blog, axe.mozilla.com. Really good technical blog post. Last but not least, out of comfort zone.net with blog posts in French, in English, most of the time in Franklish. Uh, funny enough, it's not a big technical blog because I do my technical blog post elsewhere, uh, but there's a lot of... Uh, good content. Thanks. Relevant. Yeah, I only need 20 bucks. So, uh, yeah, so you can go there. I will put my slides there. I will put the recording there. And uh, this is it. So, any question, comment, insult? I will go with the insult. Nothing is impossible. <laughs> this is my uh, question. No, actually, I, I saw some people build those applications. We have the Air Map uh, from Nokia on the Firefox OS. Uh, we have something using the uh, what is the um, not the Google Map, but the open version, OpenStreetMap. We have an OpenStreetMap application. So GPS application have been made. I, on, I also have the uh, like uh, turn by voice, and I tried it yesterday. I never tried it. It's working well, except that I don't really like the voice. But yeah, it's working well. Uh, line of business application, uh, just kind of company for services or website, uh, games. Uh, so s those are the things that I saw already and we're only at the beginning, but there is a really big excitement. The only thing is that we may not see the excitement here, so it's why I'm here, to, to excite people. So, thanks, <laughs> because uh, we did not release in North America, and this is not uh, something that we will release really soon in North America, because the primary target, remember, it's to open the web to more people, so we go on emerging market yet. Uh, actually, we went to an emerging market yet, but as I said, you can buy a phone, and uh, there is no limitation, of course, of course, you always need to keep in mind that those are inexpensive devices, so they're low-end devices. So you may test some stuff, and you may find that yeah, if you compare this to the latest iPhone, a really cool, shiny Android device, you may find that it's a little bit slower. But it's a 500 phone versus a 100 box phone. So you, you need to keep those things in mind. But once you understand those, and I would say, let's be a little bit pretentious or uh, asshole, whatever you mean, uh, if you do great code, that should work. I like to say this. Any other question? How much control does the carrier have over the operating system? Can they lock down certain applications and not allow them to fall? Uh, can they force certain applications to fall that they can't? Yeah, so the question is uh, how much control basically the uh, operator have on the system. So what's happening is that uh, not the operator, but the OEM, they're building their own version of Firefox OS, so they, they build the code. And uh, as an example, we had a problem with one of the phone, uh, you know, when you're using the GPS on a phone, before it connects to the signal, uh, signal of the satellite, most of the time, uh, but not most of the time, but all those smartphones use uh, what we call the AGPS server to kind of get kind of where you are, you know, when you using on your phone, you have that big circle. It's because they use the internet connection, the Wi-Fi, and all those signals to trying to kind of give you your geolocation. And at some point, it's getting smaller and smaller. It's because you're connected to the satellite. So in that case, we had a problem with one of the, those phones because uh, the OEM did not uh, make the AGPS server work. So it was not something that we were able to fix. So they still have some control. Uh, but if you want to be called a Firefox OS phone, you need to certify your phone so you have a minimum of quality. So we're going to check. We're going to check that your phone is still open because we don't want we don't want shitty phone outside. Yeah. I said, do I have another question here? Is there any integration with Persona? This is a good question. Uh, not that I know. But I can tell you if there is something that is working about it. Actually, I really don't know. So uh, what are we going to do? Like, just come see me after. I'm going to give you my email. Or just send me an email back, and I will try to check with the right person. But I didn't see anything about it. But uh, that would be awesome. Yeah, oh, sorry. You're so good. I'm so bad. I like webcast. Uh, yeah, so the question was, uh, is there any integration with personal? 
Any other question that I could repeat? Yeah, yeah. So the yeah, the only integration part would be that with the marketplace, but there is no other integration with the uh, within Firefox OS than the marketplace. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. Oh, <laughs> you don't have any question for you? No? So the question is, uh, Android have something to share data between application? Uh, does Firefox OS have the same thing? I'm losing my mic. Yeah. So uh, not yet. Good, good answer huh? for a long question. <laughs> Just behind. Yeah. Uh, there is some content. We have some restriction, uh, like sexuality stuff and, and those like things that uh, we may not want yet on the marketplace because the structure is not there yet to manage who can access the content. Uh, but uh, that's going to be mostly on the technical side. And this is also, uh, sorry, the question was, is there any, like, what is Mozilla checking also the content on the application? We won't check all the content, but we will check big, big line like, I said sexuality stuff. Uh, what you need to keep in mind is because we're looking for the technical stuff, uh, the, the code, uh, to see what you're doing with the code. If you submit something that is obfuscated or if you use mscript, uh, we're going to ask you to send us a clean code because that's going to be a lot easier for us to check. Uh, but uh, no worries, we're not going to share or sell your code. Any other questions? Yeah? So, yeah, so the question is that, is there any sandbox for the application? The answer is yes. So I cannot, my application cannot get the data from your application. So the security level is really, really important <laughs> for Firefox OS. Uh, are there any tutorials on uh, how to uh, build Firefox OS into an existing phone? Yep. Yeah, so if you go on uh, Mozilla Developer Network, uh, you just search this and the link is in my presentation, you go there. Uh, there is some documentation. As I said before, it's not quite easy to build your own uh, build. There is a lot of steps. So uh, if, if you're technical enough, you shouldn't have any problem. But uh, the build is not quite always working with all the phones. So I know some people were able to make it run on a Galaxy S. Some other people were not able to make it run on another version of Android. Most of the people try on Android phones uh, because it's probably the most open phone where you can use it. So uh, I would say that some people are successful, some not. But uh, you can see the directive on Mozilla Developer Network. If you have any issue, you go in Stack Overflow, you ask a question. If you find something that is not there, you commit your uh, modification or you just had uh, your stuff in Mozilla Developer Network to help other developers. I thought you had a question there. No? Someone watched this slide. Yeah. Oh, finally, <laughs> one for you. So in the beginning, you mentioned that uh, your CSS needs to be pretty sensitive. Is that including the law itself, or is it just other? Uh, so, sorry, I didn't hear the question. At the beginning, you yeah. mentioned that your CSS has to be pretty sensitive. Oh, uh, yeah. Include, uh, no, no, Muslim prefix will uh, will work uh, <laughs> because it's it's running Gecko. But it's just because if you're using uh, this is I don't want to bitch against those kind of things, but uh, I think we see too often today's people building, uh, okay, let me start again. A and I, I have the right to say this because I used to work at Microsoft, but I, I, I have the feeling that we're back in a high E6 era. So a lot of people are building only for WebKit because Google, because Opera. And, and so I have a feeling that like some code now, some website or some feature, of the, some website or web application are working only on specific browser. And this is not something we want to do. This is not something we want to encourage. So uh, I wouldn't count on the prefix also on Mozilla uh, because they will maybe at some point just disappear. Any other question? Sorry. With, with the operating system, the 
on tablet. So the question is, Firefox OS would be available on, available on tablet. So the answer is yes. Uh, actually, there is uh, what is the company that are making all the hardware for iPhone? Uh, the big, big China. Foxconn, yeah. Foxconn. Foxconn, yeah. They're they're making tablets right now for Firefox OS. The only thing is that that first version of tablets won't be available to the public. That's going to be mostly for a developer uh, contributing to Firefox OS to boot to Gecko to just be able to test it on a bigger device. But actually, your initial plan when we started to think about Firefox OS was to go tablet first. But uh, we had a lot of pressure from uh, users, from OEM, from different places to really target smartphones first because they, they really had a need for smartphones first. But tablet will come. Uh, we announced at CES uh, on, I don't remember the company, but that's going to be on the television, on one of the te television. I don't remember the company. I need to check. So uh, Firefox OS is there. People can use it. And, but as I said, we're not making hardware but we are open to uh, people using the OS on whatever makes sense. One, one more over there. Oh. Yeah. Um, does uh, Firefox OS support uh, offline notification? Or offline app Yeah, so actually you can add uh, what you call the alarms now. It's a way to launch a process. Uh, we're still working on some notification, like uh, like the remote notification, but uh, there is no problem in the offline mode. So you can use it or index a DB to save your stuff offline storage, or if you're using a package app, your data will be uh, stay on the phone. So uh, they told me that is the last question. So if you have any other questions uh, right after like the uh, draw and everything, I'll still be there. I will be there till the end. So come say hi. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions or not, just, just come talk to me.